and I apologize for that. And I always forget to turn the sound on when I start talking after the video. But anyway, I apologize for the uh, delay tonight. Um, I'm going to try to speak a little bit quicker to get through everything. I'll keep uh, the announcements brief because you can find all of this information in the app anyway. But before we get into those things, I want to check and see uh, what your homework uh, looked like. Did you do your homework last week? Your planned act of kindness is what you were supposed to do. Uh, now, my, So you were supposed to plan a secret act of kindness to do in the next 24 hours. And that was you know, last week's 24 hours. Uh, so I hope you did them. Uh, if you did, uh, that's awesome, and I appreciate it. So um, for sure, I hope that you were able to do those things. And just if you did it, just comment and say uh, how that went. You don't have to say what you did, or you don't have to say who you did it for, because uh, it's supposed to be secret. Uh, but do you plan on doing another one? Was it good? Did you enjoy the experience? Was it fun? So uh, did you feel like you were doing God's work? Because you were. So uh, anyway, uh, I hope you did your homework. Let me know how that went in the comment section below. Bible study with Jim Norman. Uh, Jim took off last Sunday. He had kind of a, a family, uh, an we call it an emergency, but something time sensitive came up that they had to handle last week. So Jim should be back this Sunday at 6.30 on Zoom as they work through the book of Judges. They'll be finishing that out. Um, as I mentioned just a little while ago, uh, I'm going to talk fast on these announcements because you can get all this information and so much more on our Facebook page or on the app. If you don't have the app yet, you definitely need to. All right. Uh, the best way to get that is to text LFCOG space APP to 77977. Get the app, download it. Uh, and you have all the announcements right there at your fingertips. But these are what they are. Uh, it is the Able Center Pregnancy Resource Center Baby Bottle Drive. We have some of those here in the building. Uh, please, many of you have taken those, and I appreciate that. Just make sure you bring them back filled with uh, cash, check, or uh, you can put a credit card in there, I guess, if you wanted to. They'd be happy with that. But coins, cash, or check, uh, those are due on Mother's Day. So uh, get those filled up and don't forget to bring them back. I already have a few turned in. I have three bottles here filled up. I appreciate that. Keep them coming. All right. Landmark Kids. Uh, you can find their videos in the Landmark app as well under media. Uh, but uh, that's um, Lauren was over here earlier tonight doing her Zoom meeting with the kids. And she'll be there as we have kids on Sunday morning. So Children's Church has returned uh, on Sunday morning, so we look forward to having your kids there. This is for kindergarten or ages five uh, all the way up through fifth grade, uh, and sometimes you'll get a special four-year-old sneak in there like my son, so every now and then there's a special guest, uh, but if you want to help with that uh, in any way, please contact Lauren Valentine and let her know she's looking for some people to help her out, uh, all right? Uh, special music. If you can sing or play an instrument in a solo capacity, uh, for sure, we would love to add you to the special music rotation. So we used to, Jim Norman used to head up and, and make that list for us, uh, but Bethany is, is kind of uh, finding her way in, uh, as on staff here and has decided to take on that responsibility as well. So if you can do that, if you have a gift, uh, if, if God's given you a song to share, uh, make sure you get in touch with Bethany and be added to the special music calendar. We also need some Facebook greeters. Uh, we've, we used to have four or five. We've dwindled down to one. Uh, so that is an incredibly important job. I know that it seems simple. and It's like, well, Facebook greeter, that's kind of lame. What is that? Well, uh, we want our online services just like this one to feel as warm and welcoming as our in-person services. And the only way, really the best way to do that is for uh, folks like you and I to, to greet people as they log in to the live services on Sunday mornings and just say, hey, welcome. Uh, can we get you anything? Do you have any prayer requests? And just to kind of follow along with the sermon, uh, you know, type out some of the, the verse, the verse references that are used and 
uh, those kind of things. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and contact Jim Norman to become a Facebook greeter. We have a sheet, a cheat sheet of things to do and not to do. Uh, it's a pretty simple job, but very, very important. All right. Uh, not as easy, but just as important uh, is our nursery workers. So if you would like to help with the Landmark Littles, as they are now branded, uh, please contact Shannon Allen to serve. Those little children definitely are important to God and they're important to us here at Landmark. So if you want to spend some time with sweet little toddlers and babies, please see Shannon Allen to get on the nursery list, okay? All right, a couple things coming up, all right? The Mardi Bras for a Cause is sponsored by the Rotary Club of Princeton and WVVA. We'll be collecting women's and young ladies' undergarments and some other uh, female products. Uh, look on the app for all of the announcements. That is Tuesday, May 11th from 5 to 7 p.m. It will be an actual outdoor event. Uh, so we want to collect as many things as we can, donate, and we'll bring them to the event. Uh, and there's some other fun stuff associated with that. We also have the church workday coming up. Daughters of the King workday is going to be Saturday, April 24th. Uh, they're going to be focusing mostly on the front of the church building, uh, the flower beds, the front porch, uh, painting, cleaning, uh, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, some you see Dana Steele to be uh, put on the list if you want to participate in that. Uh, also, a few of the gentlemen are going to also work on that day. We have They got most of the trees down, but there are still two dead trees on the property, and they're going to take them down that day. Uh, so if you want to help with that, contact Jerry Steele. So, uh, and the last announcement is actually the thing coming up. This Saturday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, is our spring vendor fair. So uh, these vendors are coming out. You can see all of those um, uh, products and, and people advertised here on the screen on this slide. Uh, and then there's even more than that. So please come out and support them. They come. I've mentioned this before. They pay us to put booths there. So we want to make it worth their while. Uh, so please come check out what they have. And even if you're not interested in buying anything, it's great just to come and support these entrepreneurs and these small local small businesses and just let them know, look, Landmark cares about you. All right. So please do that. Uh, and again, you can find all of these and announcements and so many more on our app. And there's a bunch of other stuff there as well for check to check out. As always, if you have any prayer requests, type them in the comments. Uh, as we go along, I have a few so uh, already, but if you have anything else you'd like for us to pray about tonight, please, please mention it in the comments section. So with all that out of the way, let's move into tonight's topic, freedom to serve. It comes from Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. Let me switch this over so you can see that. Yes, freedom to serve from Galatians 5. Verse 13. All right, so uh, let's start with our scripture passage this evening. All right, <clears throat> Galatians 5.13 tells us this. For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters. But don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. All right. Now, I know that that is a high calling. We are, Christ has set us free, free from sin, a, a free from fear, free from hell. We have so many freedoms, right, to live in Christ. And, but there is always this balance with freedom comes the responsibility. What am I going to do with my freedom? I, just because I can do whatever I want doesn't mean I should do whatever I want. Uh, here's an example. Uh, when you were a little kid, did you ever um, ride your bike really, really fast like this little guy here? So fast that you could just feel the wind blowing in your hair almost like you were flying. And, and maybe if you had the helmet on, maybe the you, you were going so fast that the wind started to sting your eyes. You know what I mean? And sometimes that feeling made you think that you were going so fast you could just let go of the handlebars 
and close your eyes and you would just keep going in a perfectly straight line right down the sidewalk or right down the street. But then you opened your eyes and it was too late to stop yourself from crashing into a bush and flying over the top of your handlebars or in the case of this young fella here running into a tree or maybe slamming into the side of the neighbor's car uh, or maybe just hitting your brother in front of you on his bicycle, which may or may not have happened to me, uh, right? So maybe you've experienced that, right? And so why am I talking about riding a bike? What does that have to do with anything? Well, as I said just a few minutes ago, just because you can act on every desire you have doesn't mean you should. Right, Just because you can go really fast on your bike and it feels like you can close your eyes and let go of your handlebars and just go in a straight line doesn't mean you should do that. Right, Just because you feel like you can and just because you have the option, the ability to act on every desire you have doesn't mean you should. Uh, I saw a meme going around on Facebook, a post saying like sometimes – I'm an adult, but sometimes I forget that I can get in my car and go buy a cake and eat it and nobody can stop me, right? Well, you know, just because you can do that doesn't mean you should do that, right? We know what that means. And we use restraint in a lot of areas in our life, like diet or exercise or uh, being around certain people or saying certain things out loud. We know what it means to use restraint, but we don't always do that in our spiritual lives. You see, um, you know, just because we can act on every desire we have doesn't mean we should. Christ sets us free to live the life he's called us to live. But sometimes we use that freedom in selfish ways, don't we? Sometimes we, we I mean, and we saw it happening uh, a lot, uh, or, or at least not, maybe not the freedoms being used, but we we heard it a lot in the church when mask mandates first became a thing. You know, there was this notion, and it's not spiritual freedom so much as uh, your freedom as an American citizen. It's like, look, it's I'm an American citizen. I'm free to do whatever I want. You can't tell me I have to put a mask on or I can't go in this building. You can't make me get a vaccine. As, as we're, we're seeing now, right? Those are conversations about freedoms. I can do what I want. You can't tell me what to do. And Christ has set us free, and we get to choose what to do with that freedom. Now, when it came to wearing masks and stuff like that, my opinion was if I can do it, then I should use my freedom to serve some people who perhaps, uh, you know, are susceptible or more sick. You know what? It's my, I can wear a mask. And so I'm going to choose to relinquish that freedom in the name of the greater good. That was my choice. And I got to use my freedom to do that. And so again, we have freedoms in Christ to do all kinds of things, but sometimes we use them selfishly. We use our freedoms in Christ to do things that we want. We abuse the grace of God sometimes. We say, we think to ourselves, you know what? I, God will forgive me because there's grace. So I'm going to go ahead and do this thing that I know I shouldn't do because sometimes it's better to ask for forgiveness when I know I won't have permission, right? Um, so the thing is, we use our freedom selfishly sometimes. But but Paul, the Apostle Paul, who wrote this letter to the, to the Galatian church, says that instead of using our freedom selfishly, okay, Instead of using your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature, we can use our freedom in other-centered ways. Instead of being self-centered, we can be others-centered. We can serve other people. We can meet their needs. We can demonstrate God's love through our freedoms. We are called to use our freedom in Christ to be others-centered. And that it means exactly what it sounds like. Our lives should be centered around serving other people. And that's the free, we have the freedom in Christ to do that. We're not slaves to sin. We can choose to do good, empowered by the Holy Spirit. And so we should do that. That's what we're called to do. That is a much better use of freedom than just sinning and getting forgiveness.
You know what I mean? I hope you do. So, uh, but anyway, that's uh, our time tonight. And again, I wanted to keep it short because we started so late. But uh, let's get to our homework uh, or, yeah, your homework <laughs> for uh, what's coming up. So here is your homework assignment. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23 and 24. Uh, now, I'm going to do that for you right now. We're going to read that together because that way I know you've at least done part of your homework, right? Because we've done it together. So anyway, read 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 23 and 24. What reasons does the Bible give us for limiting our freedoms? And then how would you explain this concept to someone else in your own words? All right, so there's your homework. I'm going to keep it up here uh, so you guys can write that down, take those notes, do whatever you need to do. But we're going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 23 and 24. I'm going to read them for you right now. And they may sound a little bit weird because I'm reading out of my study Bible, uh, which is the New American Standard Version. So some of the wording is a little bit weird, but you, I'm sure you will get the point. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23. All things are permitted, but not all things are of benefit, or not all things are beneficial. All things are permitted, but not all things build people up. No one is to seek their own advantage, but rather that of their neighbor. All right, so don't seek, uh, don't seek your own advantage, but seek to find a way to get your neighbors ahead. Find a way to do good for those around you. So, First Corinthians chapter ten, verses twenty-three and twenty-four. What reasons does the Bible give us for limiting our freedoms? And then, how would you explain this concept to someone else in your own words? If someone else was like, look, man, I'm, I'm free to do whatever I want. And I have freedom in Christ. I can do whatever I want to do. I know he'll forgive me for my sins. I know I can choose whether to do good or not. I just want to do what I want to do. Why shouldn't I? When someone asks that, how do you explain this concept for limiting your freedom and not all things are permitted, but not everything is beneficial? So how would you explain that? So that's your homework. All right. I hope that you do that. That's an excellent exercise uh, in just understanding these concepts of what scripture has to teach us. And so uh, as we get ready to close with prayer, I want to, uh, again, I don't, I'm looking through the, um, these comments here. I don't see any prayer requests listed. Uh, so um, let's pray together, shall we? All right. God, thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunities that we have. Thank you for the freedoms that we have, the, the fact that we have a choice. We can decide what to do with this freedom you've given us. We ask that you would help us to stop living for ourselves, and to, but to live in your kind of freedom, a freedom that allows us to serve other people instead of serving ourselves. God, we ask that you would help us to set aside our own desires and live the life you've called us to. That means putting others first. And God, we want to take time and do that now. We want to put some of these people first who have some requests. We have a few private requests uh, that we have uh, that have come to my attention. And so, God, we you know each and every one of those situations. You know the hurts. You know the hearts involved. God, we just pray that you would love people, that, you, that people would know that you're there, that people could feel your presence in, their, in these dark times that you would provide peace, that you would provide direction and guidance. God, we also want to pray for Kim Talent's brother, Danny. Uh, as uh, the doctors say that he's not long for this world, we just pray that you would give peace and comfort, not only to him, but to the family. May he be totally secure where he's going when his life on this earth ends. God, we pray for Rodney. 
uh, Rodney Hansen as he's going through these heart issues. He's had some stress tests and he's had some uh, some other tests done. We just pray that the results would come back and the doctors would have a clear guidance, clear indication as to what is next for him. We just ask that you give them wisdom and give him the ability to do what they've asked. You know, if that means uh, having to take it easy or do lifestyle changes, we pray that you would help him to do that. God, we pray for uh, Sylvia Wright and her mother. God, we her mother is not well, and Sylvia is having to take care of her. And and, and uh, Sylvia's sister just passed away a few months back, and so uh, there's a, a lot of hurt and a lot of stress in Sylvia's life right now. God, we ask that you would relieve some of that burden from her. God, that she would turn to you, and you would lift that off of her shoulders. God, we pray for Buck Trail. Uh, as he's going uh, sometime soon to an eye specialist, we just pray that you would help him see again. God, we pray for Kim Maynard as she's preparing for some serious wrist surgery uh, here this week. God, we just ask that you would be over everyone involved, and we pray that you would give her a faster than expected recovery time so that she could get back to cutting hair. Uh, as she's going to have to take uh, an estimated month and a half or almost two months off. And that's tough when you're self-employed. So, God, we ask that you would provide for the family and, while she can't work, but also may, get, may she return to work quicker than expected. God, we pray for all these people who are experiencing some negative side effects with these vac some of these vaccines. Uh, God, we just pray that you would sort this stuff out, that you would protect those who've already had this vaccine, uh, that you would allow them to not have any ill effects, and also, God, that, that they would stop giving it to people until they've figured it out. We just ask that you would be with our country, be with this world. May we be a people known for our grace for our forgiveness, and for our abilities to serve other people. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight. I'm sorry that I talked so fast. I just wanted to make sure we ended at about the same time we normally do, uh, even though we started a little bit late. So thank you. Uh, spread the gospel, not COVID. All right. Please be safe do whatever it is that you need to do. Uh, I can't wait to see you guys on Sunday morning at 11 here in the building or on Facebook Live. And again, you can catch this video and so many others on our YouTube page, or you can get there from the app. All right. Uh, have a great week. See you next time. Bye.